number 15, John 15. Can't seem to get away from this gospel that I love so much. Praise God. Amen. Glad you are here, every one of you. Amen. Thanks to those who helped out with our girls. Amen. This first part of the service. I, I, I want to tonight look specifically at a phrase. We'll look at some background, but I want to look at a phrase more than anything and glean insight into how we can fulfill what Jesus commanded us to do. Let's just kind of dissect this for a few moments and then we're going to look specifically uh, at verse number four. Jesus uh, speaking, he said, I am the vine. Uh, he, is, he is the one that the church must be connected to uh, even greater than the church. And we as individuals must be connected to if we want eternal life. He is the vine and we are the branches. Uh, he is the source of life. If you have a vine and you cut a branch off of that vine, that branch will die within itself because it doesn't have the ability to live on its own. It needs the source of, uh, uh, of, of the vine. The Bible says, and my father is the husbandman. Now I know that he is the one that comes and proves and he dresses and he takes care of the vineyard, but even more than that, he owns the vineyard. Now the vineyard mm -hmm. that you and I live in and are planted in in Christ is owned by the Heavenly Father. Praise God, the Creator of this world. And so uh, he said every branch or every believer, every Christian, amen, uh, 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 every branch uh, in me that beareth not fruit. Let me just say this, that Christ alone is salvation, or salvation in any, none other but Jesus Christ. And he said that every branch uh, in him that beareth not fruit, you can't be in Christ and not bear fruit. Mm -hmm. It's an impossibility. So if, if you say that you are in Christ and, and you're not bearing the fruit of, 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 the, of, the, uh, uh, of the cross and of the Spirit of God, then you are not abiding in Christ. There's something happening. There's been a sever. Or there's been a breach in your relationship. Amen. The Bible says that, that the husband, man, he, he, he takes away. And so, uh, most recently, our tree down here that we cut, 100 years old, Brother Doug, count of those rings, got up to 98. Uh, but Brother Craig, it wasn't, it wasn't anymore producing. It wasn't a lot. I have an apple tree in my backyard, and uh, I've, I've worked on Brother Josh some. There's some branches coming off of that that are dead. The tree's alive, but the branches are dead. So what do you do? You cut them off. There's no abiding anymore, Sister Barbara, in that tree, so the branch must be cut off. And if we are abiding in Christ and we are not producing, amen, the Word of God says that the Father, uh, he, 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 he gets rid of us. And the Bible says in every branch that beareth fruit, amen, uh, uh, that, that is in him. What is that bearing of fruit? That is abiding in Christ. That is keeping the cross of Jesus Christ as the object of our faith every day in our life. The Bible says that he purges it. You know, why does sometimes we go through things in our life that maybe are painful or difficult? You know, you may say, well, God, I'm abiding in you, and I know that my source of life is in you, and the cross is my object of faith, but, 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 but I'm feeling the pressures of being pruned. Uh, any of you that have trees uh, or fruit trees or even the, the trees in your yard that maybe are flowering trees of some sort, and when things begin to look a little bit crazy in them, what do you do? You cut them back, not because they're dead or not because you dislike that tree, but simply because you want it to produce even more. And so in our life, when we go through things that are difficult, it's not that God is out to get us, so to speak. And it's not that God is not concerned for us, but he realizes that pruning us in particular areas will also increase our faith in him. So he allows the pruning in our life. Mm -hmm. We don't like that. 
none of us like that. But he sees that, that we're producing fruit. And he says, I'm going to make you even a better producer. And so he begins to purge in our life. And he cuts and he takes away to make us better. What a God we serve. What a God we serve. Uh, that, that he, he didn't bring it just for our end, but He brought it to pass that we could be more fruitful, Sister Barbara, for His kingdom. And, 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 and the Bible says that uh, the, the branch that bears fruit, He, he purges, and that it may bring forth more fruit. God, help us to allow on this Pentecost Sunday the Holy Ghost to work and move in our life that we bring forth more fruit. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in verse number 3, Now uh, ye are clean through, through the word which I have spoken unto you. And then Jesus says something that I want us to focus on for just a few moments this evening. He says, Abide in me. <coughs> Abide in me. He says, Look at me exclusively. For everything that you need. Keep yourself positioned in me exclusively. For whatever life may hold and you need in life. Abide in me. And he said this. That if you abide in me, then I will abide in you. So the choice is, Sister Tina, for me as the branch to be connected to the vine, that I must abide in Him. But Brother Doug, it works the other way too, that as I abide in Him, Brother Josh, it's beneficial because He abides in me. Mm -hmm. And so tonight I want to just talk about that for a few moments in my message. What does Christ mean when He says, abide in me? Because He goes on now to say, as the branch or the believer or the Christian, I cannot uh, in itself bear fruit except in abide in the vine. You know, we can try to be good and we can try to do all kinds of things on our own, but we really can't produce, at least for the benefit of eternity, in ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, we can be a good-hearted per person. There are some kind-natured people. Uh, but, but unless they abide in Christ, it benefits nothing for the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we ourselves, uh, we cannot produce fruit unless we abide in Him and He in us. And we can bring forth the fruit of the Spirit of God. Every one of the fruits of the Spirit can be produced in our life if we will abide in Him. But what does it mean to abide in Christ? It's challenging tonight. How do I abide in Christ? And what does that mean to me as a believer? Christ has commanded it to me. So help me understand, Lord. The very first thing is this. Now I know this is elementary, but this is profound. We cannot come, uh, abide in Christ unless we have a conversion. There must be a conversion for us to abide in Christ. I love what, uh, I think it's 2 Corinthians, let me turn there tonight. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number 17. Amen. The Word of God says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, mm -hmm. or if any man abide in Christ, amen, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, purchased by the work of the cross, the Bible says he is a new cre creature. All things, amen, are passed away. Anything that was before salvation is done away with. And the Bible says uh, behold, all things have become new. Amen. If we abide in Christ, there's a new nature in us. Amen. There's a newness about us. The old things are passed away. Abiding in Christ, we must be converted. The world cannot give us, amen, uh, anything that Christ has for us. Amen. The world cannot abide in Christ because they reject Him. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to abide in Christ, there has to be a true conversion. I believe looking around the sanctuary this morning that, or this evening that uh, that is true of, uh, of those that are here. You're here tonight because you had a conversion. So you know what it's like to abide in Christ. But the second thing that I notice is this. Not only is there a conversion, but there's a closeness. 
No, Eli, there must be converted, but there must be a closeness. That, that word of abide, uh, it, it, it means literally a closeness. Abiding in Christ. Uh, have you, uh, in, in your life, uh, thinking about a, a, a closeness to Him? Well, let me better just explain it this way. In Isaiah chapter number 53. Verse number 6, the Word of God says this, that all we like sheep have gone astray. We had turned everyone into his own way, and the Lord laid upon him, or Jesus Christ, the iniquity of us all. Without Christ, we're like a sheep without a shepherd. Amen. We're, we're just roaming aimlessly. Yeah. In fact, the best way to say it is this way, Brother Steve, is... We are sheep without Christ. We are hopeless. And we, we, we don't have any direction. We don't have someone leading us, guiding us, Brother Justin. When, you, when we look at uh, the parables that Jesus gave in Luke chapter number 15, you'll find that there's a lost sheep, uh, there's a lost coin, and then there's a lost son. The lostness chapter deals with this, and I've said this before. The very first thing is the sheep is helplessly lost. I mean, there it is on its own. It's wandering on a stray. It doesn't have a shepherd, brother Dennis. It's helplessly lost. The coin is heedlessly lost because the one who was betrothed has somehow misplaced the coin. And then the third story that Jesus gives parable is a son who is willfully lost because he chose it. And so, Brother Eli, when we look at ourselves being like sheep, the Word of God says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We were helplessly lost. We had no companionship. We had no one to lead us. We had no closeness. But thank God for a shepherd. Thank God for a Savior who wanted to have relationship with us. And so He picked us up and put us on, put us on His shoulders. And He carried us and He brought us to a fold where we can have a closeness with the shepherd. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. I won't even fear uh, in the valley of the shadow of death, for he is with me. Yeah. Amen. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. You know why? Because I'm abiding in him. There's a closeness that only comes with the shepherd. Amen. So there's a conversion, but there's also a closeness with him. Thank God tonight that we can abide in him. Yeah. We can be close to him. He's not far from any one of us, but he's very near to us. Abiding in Christ. So a conversion, a closeness is the abiding in Christ. But there is a communion. Abide in me. It means a communion. Being close to Christ will, have a, will cause us to have a communion with Him. Let me say, what do you mean by communion? Well, if you were to go get on the train, or maybe you, you pass certain people uh, on your job all the time, maybe you pass them because you drive through McDonald's, or maybe uh, you, 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 you ride with a, a group of people to a specific place, uh, maybe on a bus, or uh, maybe someone on a train or on an airplane, however it is, you know, you may see or you may know people, but you really don't commune with them. They're just a Acquaintances. And so if we're going to abide with Christ, it's not an acquaintance relationship, mm -hmm. but it is a communion that we have with Him. Amen. That we commune with Him. We communicate. Amen. There's a closeness in communication. The greatest skill that any of us will ever learn uh, for relationships, uh, for those that we work with, is communication. I need to know what my boss expects of me. I, I, I need to know uh, uh, what, what, the, what are the realms, what are the boundaries, what do you want me to do? It comes by the George about communication. The greatest tool, Sister Rachel, in our marriage is communication. If you don't communicate with one another, how do you know one another, Brother Doug? How do you know what each other's needs are? How, how do you bring yourself to the union that God intends for it to be if there's no communication? And I, I've talked to some people before, and I scratch my head like, how do they communicate in their marriage? They don't even know what's going on. 
But if we're, if we're abiding in Christ, mm -hmm. there's a prerequisite that we must communicate with Him. Not with things, but we commune with Him. We share with Him our heart. I've mentioned this before, but the Word of God says that Abraham was a friend of God. Do you know why he was a friend of God? Brother George, because he communicated with God. So abiding in Christ is communicating. I've felt challenged in our personal family devotions, not just to Satina, just pray and ask God for things for our family, but also teach our girls to communicate with God, to thank Him for what He has already done for us, to reiterate His work, because, Brother Josh, God wants us to abide in Him, and it means communication. So a conversion of closeness, it's communion. And then I look at this. Let, let me just say this. In the communication room, I, I wrote myself a little note on your side, so I have to sometimes look at my scribble. There was a man I read a story about a man who was talking about how that he had went to McDonald's. Brother Craig, he went to McDonald's and he noticed some young kids had bought some small fries. And they weren't feeding the fries to themselves, but they had bought them, Sister Barbara, because they wanted to go outside and they wanted to feed the birds the fries. He said, it was the oddest thing, he said, because Sister Stacy, he didn't see a bird around in sight. He said, but all of a sudden, one of those kids, Sister Tina, started throwing a fry. And he said, there was a bird, and wow, ah, ah. <laughs> You know, as they begin, to, he said, next thing you knew, the whole area, Brother Josh, was full of these birds munching down on McDonald's french fries. He said, you know, to me, that bird squalling was just a noise, but to the other birds, it was communication. Hey, there's McDonald's french fries down here. <laughs> So when we look at the Word of God, we look at prayer. The point is this, that to the world, they don't understand, well, why would you want to read the Word? Why would you want to spend time in prayer? But the world doesn't understand the language of the Christian. Just like uh, we didn't, he didn't understand the language of the bird, uh, uh, but, but the birds knew it because it was a language that they talked one to another to communicate. All oh, the world may not understand why we love communion with God, but for the child of God, it's a place where we're abiding in Christ, and that is why we commune with Him. Mm -hmm. And then, the fourth thing is, it's a command. He said, abide in me. It's, it's not a suggestion. Well, if you'd like to, if you want to, the best advice is to abide. But no, Christ commands those who love Him and claim to be soldiers of the cross. They must abide. How connected are you to the vine? That your life is in Him and His life flows through you? Because it's not just a suggestion tonight, but it's a command. Abide in Him. And you know, Sister Barbara, we can look at our life in areas and we reflect and say, man, I, well, I really abided. I, I was abiding in Christ. But Brother Doug, where are we today? It's not just what we went through yesterday, but it's the challenges of today. It's the cleaning of the schedule. It's, it's the cleaning of our life and making sure that we abide in Him today because Christ wants us to abide in Him. It's command. And then, this is interesting because the fifth thing that I think about this evening isn't just the conversion, the closeness, the communion, the command, but it is the consistency. Abide in Christ. It, 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 is, it, it insists on us doing something in a consistent way that we are abiding in Him. That word abide actually in other places, Sister Tina, in the Bible, actually is translated continue. So continue in me or abide in me. It is a 
continuing a consistency that we abide in Christ. It's not a temporary act, but it's a perpetual act that we consistently, always, and forever abide in Christ. So for us tonight, it's about abiding in Him. And that's why I'm here tonight, because I want to abide in Christ. I'm abiding in His Word, and I'm abiding in fellowship, and I'm soon going to be abiding in prayer in the next few moments because I want my life to abide consistently in Him in a non-consistent world. In a non-consistent world, Christ wants us to perpetually abide in Him. And then the sixth and the final thing I want to look at this evening is this. Is there's, there's compensate in abiding in Him. You see, the text that we look at this evening, Christ from the Josh, He commands us to abide in Him. But He also lets us know that we will be compensated for abiding in Him. Tomorrow, I don't know whether that gear work looks a little different, but for those who aren't retired and aren't in a place where you're not working, but many of us will tomorrow morning hit the ground again, back to work. And you go there, you know why? Because, you know, I, 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 I love preaching and I love teaching and I love pastoring, um, but, you know, God also allows me to be compensated for that. Tomorrow I go to my job. Uh, secular job, and you know, I genuinely enjoy my job. I like people. I like what I do. I, I don't typically dread, but the end result is that I'll be compensated, right? And you're going to go where you your appointment is tomorrow because you know that you'll be compensated for doing that. You're compensated uh, by a paycheck. You're compensated because it gives you health insurance. You're compensated because it gives you retirement. Some of you are enjoying the benefit of that. You're compensated because, uh, you know, there's lots of benefits to it. And so you go there because you're compensated. You abide. I'm soon abiding at my job 22 years. Wow. It's crazy. Sister Tina, you were at the bank, what, 25? This bank is the last one. 26, you, you, you abided there, didn't you? We would say, you, have, you know, part of your abiding is because you are compensated. Now, we are commanded, but Christ also tells us that we will be compensated. What is the compensation? Is that we will bear fruit. That's a great compensation. That the Spirit of God will work through Christ in us and we will bear fruit in our life. Amen. Uh, 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 one of the great things about thinking about this, you may say, Brother Sue, well, sometimes I just feel tired and I feel weak and I don't feel like I have strength. But the good news is that when we abide in Christ, He strengthens us. Uh, when we're abiding, our faith is strengthened. Our, our, our spiritual man is strengthened. So there's compensation that is given to us by Christ. So we abide in Him. And, and, and I think about this. You know, if, if I were to, I, uh, to plug a lamp in, and uh, you would see that it was plugged in there, and I turn it on, and, and, and the light bulb comes on, and, 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 and it's, it's, not, it's not a rocket science. I don't know all the things about electricity behind it, but one thing. Uh, when it's plugged in, it's connected. It, it is producing energy. Do you know that when we in Christ are plugged into the vine as the branches, we are producing energy. Amen. We are connected to a source that is great and powerful. And so that is why Christ commands us to abide in Him. Amen. Because we find that when we are plugged in, we become useful. The lamp on the shelf by itself is no good, Brother Craig. But when we plug it into the outlet, it becomes useful. But us ourselves, and we may say, what is my use? What is my value? What is my purpose? What is my potential? We will never know until we abide in Christ. Mm -hmm. We are plugged into Him. It is what we need to do because it's, a, it's, a, it's our conversion. It's our communion with Him. It's a commandment of Him. We need to do it consistently, but we find that, that we will be compensated in many ways in our life as we abide in Christ. Amen. Amen. If 
you lack spiritually, it's because you're not dying. Because he promised, Sister Holly, you can't enough. He promised that if we would abide, he would abide in us. So tonight, there needs to be no life in Christ. Because we abide. Amen. Tonight, I'm giving you an invitation to this altar because it becomes your opportunity in a spiritual sense to plug yourself into Christ. And Sister Barbara, that's where the God comes from. That's where the energy comes from. That's where the usefulness for who we are comes from. By being plugged into Christ. It makes it really simple. I've done that before. But it, it is perpetual. There's a consistency of remaining in Him. And I say this tonight. Even if tonight you're going through things in your life that is changed or is difficult, or even that you think, God, you know, I've been abiding in you. People become overwhelmed as God tries to clean them. How many people turn away, turn their back on God because they feel like God's failed them? God doesn't fail us. God proves us so that we can produce in a greater way. So wherever we're at tonight in our walk with Jesus Christ, tonight I just want it to be about this, that we abide in Him. Because as we abide in Him, Brother George, there is something to be said about the competency that He gives us. His pay is great and rewarding. If you abide in Him, you'll be compensated because He'll abide in you. Let's come and abide in Christ tonight in prayer.